If you turn with me right quick to John the 10th chapter verses 1 through 10, I believe that this word is going to liberate you because God has given me a divine assignment to articulate what he has already handed to us in the text. He has already prepared us and equipped us with his divine truth and he already introduced himself. And so we are simply reintroducing you to the Savior that's already come on the scene. For everybody joining me around the world in the Global Campus family, let me just greet you first of all with the love of Jesus, but I'm, I'm also going to just declare and decree over your life that it's already done. <laughs> it's already done. Even over the airways, I, I, I bind the enemy in every distraction in the name of Jesus Christ, every dart that has been launched against your destiny, everything that has tried to pull you off course, take you out. I bind it in Jesus' name. We walk in divine favor and victory. And I just want to make sure I declare this on your behalf. It's already done. It's already done. I feel like I need to preach that. It's already done. 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 Go right quickly to the 10th chapter of John, verses 1 through 10, King James Version. The 10th chapter of John, verses 1 through 10, King James Version. God, I speak favor and blessings over this section. The abundance of God be their portion. You said you came not that we just have life, but even abundant life. So I decree and declare that even now in this section, you're going to do a mighty and perfect work in their circumstances that they will not be suffocated by their situations. I thank you even now that release is going to come, that, that the blood of Jesus now prevails, that even against the enemy, the final enemy of death, they will have victory. And that everything around them will thrive, not die, but live, says the Lord. Thank you that the light is going to be so strong and so profound within them that they cannot deny that it is the Lord that lives within them. Not their strength, by their, not by their might, not by their money, not by their achievements and their accomplishments, but by your spirit, they will stand and stand therefore. Let the prevailing wind now sweep over this section in such a phenomenal way that it blow away. Everything that is not like you, that what's left even if it be a remnant that you get to take it as you did the little boy's lunch multiply it bless it we're giving you thanks because we know that you're able to do it so we thank you for what you're about to do in Jesus name come on shout it with me in Jesus name 10th chapter of John verses 1 through 10 when you got it say amen is anybody ready for the word I'm going to skip down. I was going to read 1 through 10, but I'm going to skip down to verses 7 through 10. Will you do me a favor and at your leisure? And then I'm going to give you a brief synopsis or overview of it. But in your own time of study, would you please make sure I said your leisure, I bind my own tongue in the name of Jesus Christ. The problem is we're too leisurely about how we study God's word. It shouldn't be leisurely at all. It should be in your, in your uh, commitment, in your intentionality, in your time that you set aside to study the Word of God. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Scripture said it is more necessary than your food. <laughs> That's how important it is. So in your study time, I want you to read verses 1 through 6, but for my sake today, I'm just going to read 7 through 10. It says, Then said Jesus, King James Version, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. He says, he is the what? Door. The door of the sheep. And in verse 8, all that ever came before me are thieves which sneak it out and robbers which taketh by force. But the sheep did not hear them. And in verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and he shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. And I am come that they may have life, and that they may have life or might have life more abundantly. Back, back up to verse 9. I want to shine our somatic spotlight on here. Uh, I am the door. 
by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall go in and out and find pasture. I am the door. As a matter of fact, you say it after me. I am the door. Who's talking? Say it again. Jesus. Who's talking? There we go. Let's do it again. Say, I am the door. And by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall go in and out. And he shall find pasture. He shall be saved. He shall go in and out. And he shall find pasture. Father God, in the name of Jesus, this is your word, your truth. Declare it for our hearing. Let it now permeate our hearts, satiate our whole beings in such a dynamic degree that we cannot deny that we have been in your proximity. Thank you for unlocking, unpacking, unfolding this truth for us that we might experience the goodness, the greatness, and the grace of our God in Christ Jesus. Kill our ignorance with your truth. Teach us who you are. That we might not know of you, but that we become to know you in a very intimate and real way. And we bind the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. Every distraction now be muted and silenced. And let you prevail in this moment. Thank you. In Jesus' name, let the redeemed say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the incredible, awesome, ridiculously phenomenal presence of our God. And his name is? Jesus. I'm going to try it one more time for the people in the back section. And his name is? Jesus. Jesus. We have been in this series, actually it's a series for all year. I, I know that we're going to have different titles that are going to be a part or component of each one of these areas, but we've been in this series all year and it is just simply Jesus, period. Uh, it is the theme for the year. It is our priority. It is our principle. It's the precept by which we're going to move uh, throughout the course of these 12 months, uh, Jesus, period. It's, 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 the, it's the main thing. It is the, it, it is the main course. It's the main idea, the main thought. It is the main principle, and it should be our main practice, Jesus, period. We have become, uh, we have become overwhelmed and overcome by so many thoughts and themes and philosophies, and if you watch the news, you're going to be terrified. If you listen to social media, you're going to be confused. If you, uh, if you watch and, and, and listen to the people around you, uh, you you're, going, you're going to really be saddened and disappointed and disheartened. There's so many things that are bombarding our thoughts, our minds, our airwaves, our, 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 our understanding, that it is so important that we now understand the only person who brings calm in the middle of chaos, the only person who has the ability to take what is not and make it what it is, the only person that can take the darkness and introduce dynamic light, which gives you difference, the only person that can shift and change your understanding so that you're no longer walking in fear, in doubt, in disbelief, in confusion, in anxiety, in stress, in worry, in woe, the only person who has that capacity, some of y'all know the answer to the test, is who? Slap your neighbor until the weave shake a little bit and say, we talk about Jesus. <laughs> Jesus starts the text here. In the text, he gives us this divine or this dynamic understanding. He says, I am the door. I am the door. That's not a foreign concept. All of us understand what doors are. And by now in your, in your adult life, I think you know we even how to work and or use a door or what a door is purposed for. It is literally an entryway. It is a gateway. It is you being able to go from one space into another space. And so it is the portal of transition. He says, I am that portal. I am that way. I am the place where you're going to go. I, the place where you're going to go, I have gone and prepared for you, but I am the way that you actually get to it. Then there are doors. Uh, you, you see and experience this. You, you've got doors on your house. Um, you've got a front door, and sometimes you even have a back door. And, and if you're really fancy, you might even have a side door. You've got garage doors. Um, there's a door on your car. Um, there's fancy cars now where the doors don't open up like this. Uh, the real expensive ones open up like this. 
and then you, the real fancy ones open up like this. <laughs> but you are used to understanding the concept of doors, that there's a door on your car. A grocery store has doors. Uh, the, the office buildings have doors. When you go into the break room, there's a door. When you go to the bathroom, there is a door. There's a whole lot of different kinds of doors. There's barn doors. Um, there's bar doors. Okay, I forgot. I'm in the suburbs, y'all bougie. There's lounge doors. Even the rooftop that you walk out on has a door. Oh, bless his name. Liquor stores have doors. Prisons have doors. There are sliding doors, there's automatic doors, there's wooden doors, there's iron doors, there's glass doors, there are accordion doors, there are double doors. The concept of doors is all around us, and there's no shortage of doors. Many doors even come with a lot of promise that if you come through this door and go to the other side, there's a whole lot that you're going to receive. There's a lot of doors who have promise of pleasure. If you just give this up and walk through this door, you're going to have the time of your life. As a matter of fact, if you just lay down your Sunday experience and just pick up your Saturday night thrill, you're going to have a lot of pleasure. It's going to be real quiet through this section. I understand that. But if you put down your praise, if you, if you silence your worship and you just come and walk through this door, I'm going to make sure that you have the time of your life. There's promise of pleasure. There's promise of popularity. There's promise of fame. If you do this, then you're going to be a celebrity. Walk through the door of this and you're going to have all of the people will know your name. Even Jesus was offered that same door, that same promise on the other side of the door. If you do this, Satan says, then I'll give you notoriety around the whole world. All of this will be yours. There's prominence on the other side of doors that people will, will, will give you the capacity to say you will be important. People will know your name. You'll have this many followers. If you simply twerk, if, I'm sorry, if you simply tweet, this is a little slip. If you simply tweet, then they will be profoundly moved by uh, the magnitude and the vicissitudes of your capacity to articulate the language. But, but, but if you just do this, then you'll get that. You'll have followers and you'll be famous, you'll be popular. It's amazing how we are walking through all of these doors all of the time and we think that on the other side it's going to be what it's not. And we end up falling for the, for the okie doke. We end up falling for the foolishness because we walk through the door with anticipations of what's on the other side only to realize what's on the other side is not what I thought was going to be on the other side. Okay, y'all gonna make me get in your business like this. You're making me preach a little bit harder than I anticipated. I got on my nice mic. Don't do that to me. You walk through the door of a relationship and you think that the relationship is going to be this and they tell you, I got the door. I'm going to hold the door for you. I'm going to be that person for you. I'm going to give you all of these things. I'm going to promise you popularity, prominence, and, and pleasure. I'm going to give you all of the trappings of your heart. I'll, I'll make your life a bliss and you get inside of the door and you realize that the representative can't stay too long. <laughs> all of the doors. Here's the challenge is that all of the doors that you walk through speak to, this is really going to hurt, but all the doors that you have walked through, all the doors, good, bad, and ugly. As a matter of fact, let me do a power people poll right here. How many of you know you walked through the wrong doors? Okay. Some of y'all are sitting with them now, but just, just look at me right here. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Just blink three times. Okay. You walked through the wrong doors. This is what's going to mess you up, okay? The reason you walk through those doors is because what's on the other side speaks to what you want. <sighs> the only reason you walk through it is because what was on the other side appealed to something that you wanted. But I want to make sure that I clarify with all of the different 
colors of doors. On the houses, if you go through a neighborhood, everybody got a different fancy door. Everybody tries to single out their door, make their door look different. They'll paint it a different color. They'll, they'll change it. They'll put glass in it. They want rod iron or they want steel metal. I mean, they want big doors, small doors. Everybody changes the doors. But with all of the doors, this is the one thing I don't want you to miss. They're really, even with all the categories, there really are only two doors. That's it. All of those can be encapsulated into two doors. There's the door of life, and there's a door of death. There's a door with life on the other side of it, and then there's, there's another door, many doors, but the way thereof ends in destruction. And so, the door of life and the door of death. Jesus said, I am the door. And he also makes sure that you understand what is on the other side of me. The promise that I am going to fulfill for your life is I'm not just going to give you life, but I'm also going to give you life more abundantly. And so he is the door, which means he's the entryway. He's the portal. He is the only way that you're going to actually experience this life that he came to give. In the text, Jesus had just healed a blind man. And this man testified to the healing power of Jesus. They were put, literally, the, the, the Pharisees put him on trial and said, wait a minute. We hear all of these people walking around town talking about, this is in chapter 9. See, so you got you to go back and read the precursor so you understand what's happening in here and why, God, why Jesus took this approach. But in chapter 9, if you go back and read it, you'll see that, uh, the, 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 that Jesus healed a blind man. This is when he spit in the mud, he, uh, spit in the ground and made mud, put it on his eyes, told him to go wash his eyes. Everybody was marveling and everybody was talking about it. A miracle had been manifested. It's like you, when you got the job and you weren't qualified for the job, everybody was talking about it. A miracle had been manifested. <laughs> when you qualified for the house and you got in a new house and they can't figure out because your credit was so up from the floor up, how God favored you and you were able to walk in, everybody is talking about it because a miracle has been manifested. When they thought you were dead, they were already asking for your stuff, but God took you and turned your things around and brought you back so that you could see who was really riding with you and who was really riding against you. It's a miracle that manifested and God just did it and everybody wants to talk about it. Your marriage made it. It's a miracle, and everybody just wanted to talk about it. And so, so, so it's the same thing that everybody was talking about it until the point that the Pharisee says, who is this Jesus? Who is this guy? This guy is, a, is, is an, imposter, an imposter. He's a fraud. He's a heretic. He's a heretic. Go get this guy. And, and they, and they want to ask him questions about it. They question the, the guy. First of all, they question the person that was blind, the boy. They questioned him. Then they question his parents. They put him on trial. And ultimately, because he did not waver, he says, listen, I don't know what, he said, this man is a, is a, is a liar, and he's, he's, he's a, a, a blasphemer, and, and he, the boy says, excuse me, sir, I, I, don't, I don't know nothing about none of that. In the text, he says, all I know is that I was blind, and now I can see. He said, that's all I know. And, and, and you gotta, you gotta, em, you, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. You gotta embrace this model for yourself. That when they're hating on you, that you don't shoot back. When they're coming against you, that you don't fire back. Come on, somebody, put your gun up. If I hold my peace, I, God will step in. He says, The battle is not yours, it's mine. Get out the way, I got this. I am the God who retributes. I'm the God who can. I'm the God who makes sure that I defend my children. So when, when they shoot at you, you got you to be able to say, all I know is that I was blind. All I know is I was broke. But I still had food on my table. All I know is I wasn't qualified. But I still got the job. All I know is I was a little country nappy-headed boy from Arkansas but I still made it on television. All I know is that I didn't know what pastoring was all about except that I grew up in the house with my daddy who was a pastor and now 18 years later, here we are. We are victory walkers all over the world. I, I, all I know is that I was blind. Slap some of the high five and say, I see clearly now. I know who with me, who's not with me. I know what a friend is and what a friend's not. I know what's on the other side of that door and I know what's behind the door that Jesus says he is. I know for myself. All I know 
<laughs> All I know. Jesus had healed this blind man, and these religious officials, the Pharisees, were so upset with Jesus that they excommunicated, they exiled, they put the boy out. Isn't that something? So Jesus says, okay, everybody's trying to figure out who I am. Let me introduce myself. Well, some of y'all felt that. Let me tell you for myself who I am. And in order to do it, one of the ways that he used was he said, I'm going to use the picture or the parable of a shepherd with his sheep. So he uses the picture of a shepherd with his sheep to illustrate and illuminate to them. He says, they, they, you, you guys are trying to figure out how this happened. I am the door. The only way that you're going to experience the promise of God is that you come through me. And the way that he uses, the, what he uses specifically is a sheepfold. A sheepfold is a whole group or aggregate of sheep. And uh, it literally is the sheep pen. Sheepfold is where the sheep were housed at night. They would graze out in the field during the day, but then at night they had to be protected, so they were surrounded by a, the walls of a sheepfold, and this was the sheep pen where the sheep stayed for the night. Are you with me so far? Now, one of the concepts of the sheepfolds is that they were co-ops. Not all of them, but some of them were co-ops. In other words, there were more than one shepherd who kept their sheep in the sheepfold. The, if every sheepfold had a porter or a gatekeeper, a person who was responsible for opening and closing the gate for the right shepherd so that the sheep would come in and then closing it so that the sheep would not go out. And that gatekeeper would make sure that he maintained the sheep in that sheepfold for the night because the dangers lurked in the nighttime. There were wolves and bears and all kinds of things that would consume the sheep or kill the sheep. So to protect the herd, which was a representation of even their, their wealth or their increase. So to protect their possessions, to protect their prized belongings, they would go to the sheepfold at night. Now, they, the sheep, when they were in the fold, if there were multiple shepherds who would bring their sheep in co-op with one sheepfold, that means that they were mixed and mingled among other sheep. Are you with me? And each one of those sheep belonged to a different shepherd. And they were guarded by the gatekeeper who would recognize the shepherd, open the gate, and the shepherd would walk his sheep inside of the sheepfold. Now, when they would enter the sheepfold, and it would come back, or they would literally begin rather to, to leave or to exit the sheepfold and take their sheep so that they could graze their sheep in the pastures. That was a problem. The problem is there's a lot of sheep in the sheepfold, and they don't all belong to one shepherd. So they would walk into the sheepfold. You got his sheep and his sheep and his sheep. And whose sheep is whose sheep? <laughs> Shepherds were so incredible at their job. They were so determined to be excellent in this regard, whether through, through tradition or whether through the natural inclination of their hearts. They knew their sheep by name. They, they were able to call them individually by their name. And this is what was so dynamic about it. When that shepherd would walk up and, and get ready to take his sheep out of the sheepfold, he would call them by their name, watch this, and those sheep whose name he called would walk out and follow that shepherd, but the rest of the sheep would stay right where they were and would not come out. Oh, that just went right over your head. Come closer, no child left behind. They recognized their own shepherd's voice. They knew their shepherd's smell. They knew their shepherd's voice. Let me tell you what is amazing. God gave me, the, 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 the analogy is, is, is clear in the Word of God, but God gave me the office of senior under-shepherd. Because be very clear, there's only one good shepherd. And I'm trying to be a chip off of the old block. So in technicality, I am an under-shepherd to the good shepherd, which is Jesus himself. But as a shepherd, someone who has responsibility and charge over God's sheep of his pasture, which is what he calls all of us. 
It is amazing to me. I can be walking in the grocery store, in the mall, and I always have this mask on. And I think that I have anonymity because I have my mask on. And somebody will see me in Atlanta. My father and I were in the airport in Atlanta. And I had my mask on. He had his mask on. I'm walking through the airport. And somebody said, Pastor. Surely they ain't talking to me. Don't nobody know me in my mask. Pastor, she said, I said, how did you know who I was? She said, I know the way you walk. I know your eyes. I could tell by your height. I knew all. The sheep recognized the shepherd, and the shepherd also recognized his sheep. I was in a store last night at Dick's Sporting Goods, and I had on my bomber, on my, my, my puffy jacket and my jogging pants, and I was dressed all the way down. They didn't recognize me, had my hat on. They didn't recognize me, but I recognized them. But this, I said, there was a victory walker. So I, I spoke to them. They said, oh, my God, Pastor, I didn't even recognize you. And a little girl said, you don't look the same as you are doing Sundays. I said, well, how I look different? I don't know, but you don't look the same. I guess I look a little thugged out. I don't know. She said, I'm so glad you recognized us because we were going to walk right by you. Oh, no, no, I know my sheep. Because a sheep knows his, a shepherd knows his sheep, but the sheep know his shepherd. Sheep are not, this is, please don't take offense to this because it's just the truth. Uh, sh sheep are not known to be intelligent creatures. Oh, okay, this is why I say don't be offended because God called you sheep. Just pat them and say, it's okay. It's okay. That's why he sent us a shepherd. It's okay. And quite frankly, they're the most unintelligent creatures they literally will graze and graze and graze and walk right off a cliff and die. They will try to drink water, get their fleece wet, fall over in the river and drown. I mean, they're just not intelligent creatures. They will wander. They're just not very intelligent creatures. So the question that I have is, how, how is it that they recognize his voice? If, you, if you're that unintelligible, then how did you recognize, how do you know the scent, the smell, the stature. How do you know the voice? Well, here's, here's three things that they know real fast. They know, first of all, because they spend time with the shepherd. See, see the, reason, the reason you don't know Jesus intimately is because the only time you spend with him is when somebody is telling you about him on Sundays. There are some things... Let's just be real. There are some things that, that the Lord knows about us that nobody else knows. And there are some things that we know about the Lord that non-believers don't know. The challenge comes when you are a believer and you still don't know. In John 10, 27 and 28, it says, My sheep listen to my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they never shall perish. No, no one will snatch them out of my hands. They have intimate knowledge of him. So when he calls, it's no wonder that they respond. But when a stranger or another shepherd calls, they don't respond. Can I just be real? That's really why, you know, when people say, I'm leaving this church, well... I'm praying for you. Let me know how I can serve you on your transition. Because I'm here to make sure that you go where you are called because my sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. So whomever you're assigned to is where I want you to be. Because I don't need Jonah taking my ship down. Let me tell you another reason why they were able to respond to his voice is because they were infatuated with the shepherd. They wanted to be around him. They wanted to be where the shepherd was. If the shepherd was moving, they were moving. I have, and I don't, I don't mean to make a, an analogy here because it's, not, it's two different things. I have a dog. I have two dogs. I have a dog, and I can't stand one of them, and I love the other one. I literally, I know, I mean, I ain't even trying to be funny. I really just don't like them. And I tell everybody all the time, I can't stand that dog. And that dog loves me. The dog going to keep his nasty self off of me. If I move, he moving. And not only is he moving, he got to touch me. 
just like, get off me. He just got to be right up on you. He's so clingy. I've been trying to sow this dog into Miriam's life. Where's Miriam? She's not even here today. I've been trying to bless her with this dog for the last two years, and she won't take it. The sheep were like that. They were infatuated. They wanted to be around their shepherd. The other thing is that they were inviolate. In other words, they followed him because they trusted him. In John, the 10th chapter, verses 4 and 5, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow. They trusted him enough to say, if you say it's time for me to move, I'm going to trust you with inviolate capacity or inviolately, and I'm going to know that there is no violation, no assailing of your integrity. So if you say do it, I'm going to do it, even if it doesn't make sense or feel good. The problem with us is that we don't trust God enough to actually move when he says move. We want to ask 10 questions. And we're going to lead with this one, but why? But when God says go, when God says move, when God removes, you got to trust him enough to say, that's my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. He leadeth me. He maketh me. So whatever he tells me to do, I'm going to follow my shepherd. And here's the unique thing. I, I told you about the sheep gate. In the sheep gate, the shepherd would situate himself in the doorway of the sheep of the sheepfold. And when he would situate himself in the doorway of that's where he would sleep for the night. So anything or any predators that could come in would have to go through him in order to get to it. The sheep had peace. They had rest. They had comfort. They were secure. And because they knew the shepherd is on guard and he will protect us from any predator that comes to take us. Are you with me? Okay, so that you have a realistic picture. Y'all got time, right? Y'all got time at home. Here we go. So that you have a realistic picture, watch this right quick. This is the sheep gate. It was not what you think. It was not all wood. Sometimes they were wood, but some, most times they were stone. And these stones, heavy stones, would be stacked up into a high uh, fortress that was pretty much impenetrable to any predators that would come. And that opening at the center of it, that opening right there, was a narrow, small opening that only one way in, only one way out. And the shepherd would actually sit in this opening and sleep in this opening so that anything that came in and tried to destroy the sheep would have to first go through him. That would be, now this is, a, this is them inside of a sheepfold. They, there would be no way for the predators to scale this wall. There's no wolf going to come through that, go over that wall. So the wolf would have to fight the shepherd if they ever wanted to get to the sheep. There would be no way that a shepherd would just open up, remove himself, and allow the sheep to be attacked by the, the predator. So this is what Jesus means when he says, I am the door. If you're going to try to attack these sheep, you're going to have to go through me. If you're going to try to take them out, you're going to first have to try to take me out. And here's the beauty of it. The, the enemy, Satan, Beelzebub, Lucifer, he already tried it. And he failed. And God prevailed over death, over hell, and the grave. So if that's the kind of God that's guiding the doorway to my life, then I don't have to worry about who's coming or what's coming against me because my God says, I am the door. L let me, can I just give you Smokey Norfolk? In the book of Smokey Norfolk, uh, translation 101, uh, chapter 2, th verse 20. He said, I wish I ain't even got to finish it. Y'all already there. I wish you would. I wish you would try to attack my baby sheep. I wish you would try to attack my sister sheep, my mama sheep, my daddy sheep. I wish you would try to come and take one of my sheep. I am the door. Come on, we got to do this real quickly because this is really profound and I, I didn't, 
I didn't, I, I didn't mean, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to keep you this long. But I don't want you to miss this because if you don't get, if you don't get this, then it has no merit and no meaning to you. What is he the door to? Three things right quick. First of all, he's the door to salvation. He is the door to salvation. Remember, he says, I am the door. He is the door to salvation. Anyone that enters in, he shall be saved. You shall be saved. He is the doorway to salvation. When you enter in through Christ into the fold, it is through conversion or regeneration. To regenerate means, if you look at it, to regene. It means that he changes your sinful DNA to the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Another way that we say it is, you're now born again. Can a man be born of a woman twice? No, but let me tell you, when you are born of Jesus Christ, born of the Spirit, you are born again. Old things have passed away. All things become new. Behold, all things now become new. That means you're regened or born again. And here's the one thing I don't want you to miss. This is profound, and this is probably where I'm going to have some trouble, but I, I'm, 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 I'm ready. <laughs> I got intercessors and angels. I got Jesus and God and all of the army on my side. <laughs> there is only one door. Jesus is that door. This is why I say it's going to be a little challenging because we live in a pluralistic mindset or pluralistic society. People will say there's many ways to God. No. You Christians are arrogant. No, we're just going by what our Savior said. It's not about what my feelings are, my perspective, my thoughts. It's not about me, my personal arrogance. No, it's about my personal belief in everything that he said. The only way to God is Jesus. Acts 4 and 12, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name of the heaven by which mankind can be saved except the name of Jesus. So watch this. To deny that is to deny the words of Scripture. All this inclusive doctrine, everybody, all of these 4,000 different ways to God. No, 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 no. Not according to my Bible. Not according to my belief. Not according to my confidence. Not according to what I believe to be truth. In John 14 and 16, Jesus answered, I am not a way. He says, I am the way. And I am the truth. And I am the life. And watch this. No one, and in, in the Greek, no one means no one. <laughs> no one comes to the Father except through me. Mankind is lost. Mankind is ignorant. Mankind is dead in sin. And Jesus is the way to life, everlasting and abundant. And so distinguishing quali quality of Christ is something that you have to actually know because if you don't get this, this is why I'm spending so much time on this. The other ones, I'm going to hit it and quit it. But these, this one, I've got to make sure I, I give you good foundation because there's one thing about Christ that distinguishes him from all the other religious founders, the people that founded the religious tracts that people believe to be the way to God. You can take Buddha out of Buddhism. And you will still have tenets of Buddhism or you will still be able to be or practice as a Buddhist. You can take Confucius out of Confucianism and the principles still remain intact. So you could still be a follower of Confucius. You can take Muhammad out of Islam and still be a Muslim or carry out Muslim principles and practices. But you cannot take Jesus out of Christianity and still be a Christian or practice Christianity. Because he didn't come as a teacher to give instruction. He came as a redeemer to become the high priest and save the souls of mankind. There is no other name given among men whereby you can be saved. Without Jesus, there is no Christian. No virgin birth, 
There's no incarnation. There's no crucifixion. There's no resurrection without Jesus. There's no atoning sacrifice without Jesus. There's no ascension without Jesus. There's no soon coming king without Jesus. Jesus was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died, and was resurrected and ascended so that he could illustrate, illuminate, I am the door, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light. You cannot have Christianity apart from me. He is the monogeneous. It means he's the only begotten of the Father. So be very clear. Christianity is Christ. This is why it's so important for you to study Jesus Christ. You cannot keep saying you're a Christian and you don't know Christ. And if you knew him, some of the things that you were doing, you would not do them. Jesus is the only door to salvation. And so he says, if you, if you come through this door, me, you will be saved. Saved from what? Why do I need to be saved? Because all have fallen short. The heart, I love this, Dr. Miller says, the heart of the problem is the problem of the heart. It's not a skin problem, it's a sin problem. So we are saved by Jesus from sin. And what is sin? It's when we transgress God's law. It's when we fall short of God's law, when we do not honor the laws of God. Thou shalt not put anything before God. Well, you've already lost. Because we put all kinds of things before God. Our feelings being the, the top of the list. Thou shalt not create idols. Your children can be your idol. Your jobs can be your idol. It's not just a golden statue that you put up and you erect. It could be the things that you actually put before God. You should not lie. Y'all really missed that one. As soon as the bill collector called. <laughs> it's no white lie, black lie, little lie, big lie. You just lied. He's not here. Who's calling? Murder, adultery, stealing, lying on somebody else, coveting. Thou shalt honor your mother and your father. There's not one time in your life you've never honored your mother and your father. That means you never did anything wrong. You were never rebellious. You never got a whooping at all. No punishment, no, no, no time out, no standing in the corner, no taking nothing. No, all have sinned. That means we all need a savior. So the second thing, and right quick, I'm going to throw it at you. Doors are to let people in, but doors are also to keep the wrong people out. So not only is he the door to salvation, but he's the door to security and safety. He says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and they will go out. They will come in and they will go out, which is a Hebrew concept of living with safety and security. You come and go with freedom and with ease. Right now, we don't live in the same level of security except that we have Jesus Christ. Because you'll be terrified to leave your house with all that's going on right now. We had a family tragically killed right next door in Joliet, Illinois. We had a family tragically killed. Seven people lost their lives because one individual was consumed by the spirit of the enemy and decided to go on a rampage killing people and shooting people at will. And we're talking about right next door. So you had everybody, you know, everybody was locking their doors. My wife went around and locked every window, every door. I think she locked the chimney down. But when you are in Jesus, he says, you will come in and you will go out, meaning that you pass with ease. Nothing can come into your life without passing through that gate named Jesus. Okay, this is going to be challenging. He filters everything in your life through his providence and his care. Why is that challenging? Because now you're asking the question, well, how can a good shepherd let bad things happen to me? Well, you have to look at it in context of the entire scripture. You can't just look at it in context of one thing. All things work together for the good that love him and are called according to his purpose. Watch this. Not just all good things. Not just all feel good things. Not just all comfortable things. But all means what? All. Even the disappointments, even the hurts, God allows them. Ask Job. Even the losses, God allows them through his providence or through his care. So it's not a free-for-all, and the enemy cannot just do what he wants to do. But he has to go 
through your door or your gate. And if you are one of his sheep, you're on the inside, you have security, you have protection. Even when you don't see it, God is still working. Even when it doesn't make sense to you, God is still working. Nothing can come in your life that God does not allow. Oh, I know this is going to help you, but it's, it's also going to hurt a little bit. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, there have been, even temptation can't come in without God allowing it. Watch what he says, though. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, there have no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able to handle. And he's so merciful that he even provides you with a way of escape so you can actually get out of it. Because he knows, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh your patience. There is no security apart from Jesus. And I don't know if you've lived long enough to figure this out, but stuff happens. Things don't happen the way you want it all the time. Things go wrong. Stuff breaks. Things happen. And because stuff happens, you need the security of Jesus. He gives you salvation. That's on the door. He's a doorway to security, but he's also the door to satisfaction. In verse 9, he says again, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall go in. He shall come out. Watch this. And he will find pasture. Tell me what sheep is not happy to find pasture. In other words, your, your desires are going to be satisfied. When I enter in through him, I enter into salvation. He rescues me from myself. Because <laughs> myself is my own worst enemy. My flesh is my own worst enemy. I have to fight it every single day. I wrestle with my flesh. He saves me from myself. But then he offers me security. Just rest in knowing that I got you covered. If it hits you, it can't kill you. I'm the one who gives you both salvation and I'm giving you security. Get you some sleep at night. Don't worry. Don't stress. Don't let nobody else come and worry for you. Don't let people rehearse your worry. Do not allow it to give you anxiety. Let your blood pressure be settled and know that God is still God and Jesus is still Lord. And when you know that he is your gatekeeper, he is sitting in the middle of the gate saying, yeah, you want to attack? I'm only going to let you in, but you can't go but so far. And I know what's going to happen. It's going to drive them closer to me. And just know that when they come to me, you're already defeated, so I'm going to put you back in your place. When you know who your Savior is, you also have security and safety and comfort. And not only that, God said everything your heart desires. If you delight Light in me, I will allow you to find satisfaction. You're going to have everything you desire and need. You will be satisfied in me. Woo! Let me take a minute because I, I can't wait. I'll shout for myself. I'm ready to be satisfied, Lord. I'm ready to have peace where I don't need See, some people don't ever get to this place where they, they understand they have what they have. Let me help you out. One of the greatest things you could ever have in your entire life, watch this, is enough. I have enough. That's why the old saints say, if he never does another thing, he's already done enough. If you never bless me with nothing else, God, I'm satisfied right here. He will take all of the greed off of you and allow you to rest in the fact that my needs are being supernaturally and divinely met. I'm going to have a roof over my head. I'm going to have clothes on my back. I'm going to have food on my table. I'm going to have everything that God says I need and you can't take it. You can't steal it. You can't stop it. You can't block it. I will have eaten. Yes, God! Yes, God! Yes, God! 
there was a shepherd. There were several shepherds who were out in the field grazing their sheep. And a storm came. And when the storm came, the thunder scared the sheep and they took off and scattered. They found a nearby cave and they all rushed into the cave. And all of them were mixed into the cave and the shepherds saw where they were going and they simply followed them in the cave and waited the storm out. When the storm had finally passed, each one of the shepherds with his staff walked up to the gate, the mouth of the cave, and they called their shepherds names. And as they called their shepherds names, all the shepherds, all the sheep started walking out one by one. And when all of his herd was gathered, he went over back into the field where he came from. Then another shepherd stepped up and did the same thing. He called his sheep by name. And after he called their names, they came out and said, yes, I, I, I'm going to follow him. And they followed him and went to another pasture to graze. And another shepherd steps up and he does the exact same thing. And you know the same thing happens another time. They all heard the shepherd's voice and they all followed after their own shepherd. They didn't follow somebody else's shepherd. They followed their own shepherd, which made this live for me in a way that I'd never seen it before. In the book of Psalms, the 23rd number, David said, the Lord, he didn't say the Lord is your shepherd. He didn't say the Lord is their shepherd. He didn't say the Lord is our shepherd. He said the Lord is my shepherd. He made it a personal pronoun. The Lord is my shepherd. When I was hurting, the Lord is my shepherd. When a storm comes over, the Lord is my shepherd. When the wolves come to eat of my flesh, the Lord is my shepherd. When sickness hits my body, the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> yes, he is. The problem shows up when you don't know your shepherd. The Lord is. You can't tell me nothing about him. You can't confuse me. You might not believe in him like I do, but I've been in a storm. Come on, I gotta hurry up and go. Don't, don't, don't touch that organ right now. I've been in a storm before, and I've had to run and hide in some caves before. I've had to seek shelter and covering before. But the thing that gave me peace even in the middle of my storm is that my shepherd was standing at the cave, and he had his rod and his staff. I thank God that he is my shepherd, and because he is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me beside. He leadeth me beside still waters. Because if the waters are not still, I might fall and drown. So he leadeth me beside the still waters. Thank God is my shepherd. Thank God he's my shepherd. His rod and stab, they comfort me. Surely. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He anointed my head with oil and my cup runneth over. I know who my God is. I know who my Lord is. I know the voice of Jesus. I heard the voice of Jesus saying, Come unto me, you that are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Is there anybody that knows his voice? Is there anybody? that recognizes his voice. Is there anybody that can say he's my savior? He's my Lord, he's my God, he's my king, he's my redeemer, he's my comforter, he's my keeper, 
He's my sustainer. He's my lifter. He's my protector. He's my provider. He's my healer. He's my way maker. He's my burden bearer. He's my heavy load sharer. He's my rock in the weary land. He's my shelter in the time of storm. He's my Jesus. 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 Yes, God. I hear you, Lord. He's my Savior. He's my shepherd. It's already done. It's already done. Your Savior is on God. Your shepherd is standing close. It's already done. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's a good shepherd. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's my shepherd. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He leadeth me. He maketh me lie down in green pasture so he can restore it, my soul. He's my shepherd. Yes, God. Yes, God. Bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name.